50 million years after our planet was born and the moon had arrived. But the repercussions of this disaster were just beginning to be felt. The moon started out about 200,000 miles closer to Earth than it is today and appeared many times larger in the sky. Earth was spinning much faster, making each day just six hours long. And with the moon so close, its gravitational pull on Earth was enormous. Earth's surface rose and fell up to 200 feet during the cycle of the moon's phases. Over time, Earth's rotation slowed down as the moon drifted away. A process that continues even today. The idea of being able to measure the movement of the moon away from the Earth has always been a challenge. And so when the astronauts went to the moon, one of the things they did, if they carried out this big device, which was a, a reflector, a retro reflector, it would beam a laser beam back in the direction that it came. On Earth, astronomers installed a laser so strong it could target the reflectors. In 1969, they made their first measurement of the time it took for the laser beam to reach the moon, hit the reflector, and bounce back to Earth. A round trip of about two and a half seconds. Doing this year after year after year, we've actually been able to confirm that the moon is moving slowly away. We not only get very exact information on the orbit of the moon, but we can actually see the orbit change. Now about 240,000 miles from Earth, the moon is moving away at a rate of one and a half inches every year. The collision that created the moon was also a major stroke of luck for Earth. That impact was so immense that it forced Earth's axis to tilt in relation to the sun, causing the familiar seasons. And without the stabilizing influence of the moon, Earth would wobble dramatically about its axis. Today, the planet would experience wild climate swings. But when did a planet that looks like the Earth we know begin to take shape? Earth's hot, molten surface took at least a billion years after the moon was created to cool and form a thick skin, its crust or so scientists believed. But no one knew for certain because Earth is such a geologically restless place that none of the original crust survives today. Yet startling new evidence is causing a major rethinking of when Earth's crust first formed. The clues to this mystery are embedded within these rocks in Western Australia. Here, geologists have extracted tiny crystals called zircons. About the size of sand grains, zircons are nearly as tough as diamonds. These relics of the early Earth formed when molten rock cooled into solid crust. So the age of the zircon gives you the age of the crust itself. And it was here that geologist Simon Wilde hit pay dirt when he found one crystal so old, he's convinced it was formed in the Earth's original crust. When we look at the chemistry in detail from the zircons in this rock, we find that it's consistent with having grown in a piece of continental crust. Radioactive dating shows that the oldest of the zircons Simon Wilde found in these hills is 4.4 billion years old, suggesting that Earth might have cooled and created a crust soon after the moon formed.
We don't know, of course, whether the continental uh, areas were extensive or whether they were just small little islands of material, but uh, certainly what we do know is that there was continental crust at 4.4 billion years ago. This was just 150 million years after Earth was born. Not a billion years as previously thought. But that led to another mystery. Once Earth was cool enough to form solid ground, water could collect on its surface. So when did that happen? Geologists, including Stephen Moisish, think the answer may lie in these same tiny zircon crystals. Zircons are extremely rare. So to find just a few crystals, Moisish had to pulverize and sift through hundreds of pounds of ancient rocks. And analysis of the chemical composition of the crystals revealed that the oldest zircons contained a high concentration of a curious ingredient. It was a type of oxygen called oxygen-18, an isotope that could only be present in large quantities if the zircon crystals had grown in water. The news that water might have been present so early in Earth's history was a bombshell. Not only was there crust present, which came as a surprise to most of us, it looks like from some of the zircons that that crust interacted with large volumes of liquid water. The idea that water settled on Earth's surface so soon is controversial. But if true, it suggests a planet much more like today's than anyone had ever imagined. By 200 million years after the formation of the Earth, you can imagine a landscape of islands and small continents bathed by a primitive ocean. The time was only 10 minutes to one in the morning. The moon existed, and so did a planet with not just land, but water. Liquid water is the key to life. Every living thing requires it to survive. And eventually, water would cover nearly three quarters of the Earth's surface. In fact, all the world's oceans contain nearly 100 million trillion gallons of it. It's an almost incomprehensible amount. So where did it all come from? How would Earth have ended up with such vast quantities of the stuff? Well, strange as it sounds, these great oceans may have been there from the very beginning, just hidden away. One key to the riddle was volcanoes, which throughout Earth's infancy pumped huge amounts of steam into the atmosphere. Then, as Earth cooled, that steam condensed into rain. Drop by drop, water collected in low-lying areas. There's nothing mysterious or surprising about this. The Earth does a 